You are watching RTV News with me, Jane Motoni. The president of the Rwanda Senate, Dr. Yemunemi Auguste, has told the people of Nyagatari district that the government of Rwanda has put a lot of effort into the development of agriculture and animal husbandry and asked them to continue to make use of these opportunities and to continue to develop. The Ministry, the Ministry of Youth and Culture says that it is going to establish a new policy on culture in order to answer the current problems in the cultural industry. Let us uh, begin this edition by informing you that pursuant to the Constitution of the Republic of Rwanda of 2003, in 2015, especially in its Article 112 and 116, today, July 30th, 2022, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, has made the following appointments. Cabinet members, Dr. Jean Christostom Ngavitsinze, Minister of Trade and Industry, Mr. Eric Gwigamba, Minister of Public Investments and Privatization, Dr. Ildefonse Musafiri, Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources. Permanent Secretary, Dr. Yvonne Mulisa, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Public Investments and Privatization. Then at Kigali, July 30th, 2022, on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. As you just heard, Rwanda has a new ministry that of public investments and privatization, and it will be held and it will be led by Eric Rwigamba. Mr. Rwigamba has versed experience in the development and implementation of financial sector policies, strategies, legislations, and corporate business planning. He serves as... Yes... He was the acting technical director and the technical manager for AFR in 2012, the general manager or country manager from July 2008 to August 2011. Griffin Rwanda, the country head, audit and compliance, Ecobank Rwanda, audit senior and audit assistant from August 2001 to May 2005, and Nest and Young Uganda. He's a board member of the Development Bank of Rwanda, BRD, a board member and vice chair of Capital Market Authority, CMAC, and advisory board member of the Financial Intelligence Unit under Central Bank of Rwanda. He holds a master's degree from Oklahoma Christian University, USA in Business Administration. Yes, that is Gigamba. Now, moving on, the President of Rwanda Senate, uh, Dr. Iamune Auguste, has told the people of Nyagate District that the government of Rwanda has put a lot of effort into the development of agriculture and animal husbandry and asked them to continue to make use of these opportunities and continue to develop. He made the remarks when he joined them for the monthly communal work where he also praised the progress they have, met, they have achieved. Innocent Mugabo has this report. The president of the Rwandan Senate, Dr. Yamuremnya Augustin, notes that as a person who has worked in the administration of the country for quite some time, he well knows Nyagatare district before and after the liberation struggle, where he confirms that most of it was a forest till people came and developed it based on the opportunities provided by their government, now making it an exemplary area in agriculture and animal husbandry with its city also progressing. <laughs> Around 1994 and 1995, I had a chance to escort the president to his visit in Israel and told them that we have a place in Rwanda we would like to develop. So they delegated a team of experts to come and make research about the area, which indicated that this is the best place for agriculture in the whole of Rwanda. No one knew that even bananas or cassava could grow here. There was only cattle, though also due to lack of enough water and pasture, they ended up dying. Now you can see how the place has transformed.
On the part of the people, they also insist that they continue their journey to make the most of the land they have for farming and breeding. It used to be a thick forest and had many wild animals, but we transformed the place and so far we are the best in agriculture and animal husbandry. Here you cultivate at one hectare of land and harvest 10 tons. One fresh and cow produces 30 to 60 liters of milk. Citizens also had a chance to reach out their requests to the senators, of which among those raised include the issue to do with vehicle insurance prices. Insurance prices have become an obstacle to most of us countrywide. 180,000 randa francs or 150,000 is a lot of money to raise. So I request that you advocate for us to reduce it. This problem is said to be in the whole country and the president of the Senate, Dr. Yamoremi Agustin, assured people that advocacy will be done. We discussed this issue with banks and insurance companies and they also agree that insurance prices are high. It is a problem that we have also addressed as senators and what I promise you is that we shall continue working on it. During the monthly communal work, senators, together with the people of Nyagatare district, took the time to prune the forest near Nyagatare town and close to the Movumba River, clearing vegetation that may hinder the overall welfare of the forest itself. It has now been three days with senators in Nyagatare district where they went for a retreat. Economic experts point out that the population and housing census provides indicators that they assist in, clo the, in closing the gaps and hinder the development of the people and the country as a whole. Olive Neta reports. In this upcoming August, the population and housing census will be conducted around the country. Local authorities continue to urge the public to participate in the census by providing the necessary information and working closely with the authorities in the smooth running of this process. Some residents say that they now understand the importance of the census. What I know about the census is that it assists the local authorities in getting information about the social life of the population. Because when the country is drafting the budget, it closely looks at how it can support the population in development. The importance of the census is that it provides the information about housing and the population and also helps in providing the real statistics of the population of the country. And when all of that information is provided to the authorities, the country uses it in supporting the needy in development. About 28,000 primary school teachers will be used in carrying out the census in the country. This time, the census will be carried out using technology. Emmanuel Muvunyi, one of the teachers that will participate in the census, says that using technology while conducting the census will facilitate the work. To benefit for us for using a short time, because while you are using a, a technology way, it takes a few times comparing to the, those ones who are using in manual ways. All informations are inside of the smartphone which we are using. Your smartphone will be helping you to type very quick. It is rapid more than the old one used. The economic expert, who is also the vice chancellor of the Kigali Independent University, Dr. Claude Rusivana, emphasizes on the importance of the census on the population and the country as a whole. The census is a driver of uh, economic planning. Uh, the census gives a clear information about the changes that were made from the previous years to the current year so that uh, different partners can take their own decisions, especially uh, government, uh, investors and other economic partners. But also it informs the public uh, how they are today, where they came from and which actions can they take. Public census also uh, helps uh, the country to benchmark 
uh, using uh, different uh, pillars uh, to other countries in the same uh, economic uh, status. The population and housing census in Rwanda will be happening for the fifth time. It is planned to be carried out from the 16th to the 30th of August. Olive Nete, our TV news. Thank you, Olive, for that report. Now, the citizens who use Nyawogo Road, they are demanding that the bridge widening activities should be accelerated since the deadline was, which was given already exceeded two months. They say that the incompleteness of this bridge causes them a loss since there is no way provided for the people who work there. Adam Squizera has this report. Just near Nyabugogo International Bus Park, the construction activities of the Bridge of Mazi is underway. However, those who work in this area, they started to get disinterested. Since during the construction works, they didn't provide for them pedestrian ways to facilitate their business activities to run as usual. We weren't trading on the bridge, but our customers used it as a path. It was a road which was used by many cars and many people. They always promise us a pedestrian way but they don't provide. The issue is this bridge, which blocked the ways. We can't even afford to pay tax due to this issue. As you can see, we are near International Bus Park. Everyone who comes parks near the bus park and he can decide to pass through our market and buy something. At least if we get it one way, for the pedestrian could facilitate us. The public transport facilitators who use this area of Nyawugogo, they also say that the delay in the compression of this bridge has affected their work due to traffic jam. Which, uh, um, the passenger may have prepared to use 500 francs to reach in town, but when we cross to another road, you find there are 55 rand and francs added on the journey. You find this bother us as we request them to accelerate its works. We whose the construction of this bridge began in March this year, and it was expected that it will be completed by June this year, as the city of Kigali announced. When it was remaining only 13 days to Chogam, the city of Kigali reported that the main activities will be completed and this road will be in use. We believe that due to quality sand and cement will be used there. Within 14 days, there will be some traffic around. The city engineer, Emmanuel Asaba Katavargwa, pointed that the delay of this bridge was because they wanted to upgrade the standard of this bridge. But by August, it will be completed. There are some works delayed unwillingly. Due to there was absence of one or two days because of certain circumstances which led to delay. We expect that by next month of August, all activities will be completed. The city engineer also asked the citizens who use this road to be patient and use provided pathways. There is a road that we provided that passes through a place known as Mutangana, as it will facilitate us to run our activities. The bridge before used to cause many problems when it was being flowing to Nyabugogo River. That's why the city of Kigal decided to upgrade it by 30 to 40 centimeters. Adam Squizera, RTV News. The Ministry of Environment intends to increase planting of bamboo trees due to the viral role they play in the environmental preservation. Precious Kiresi has this report. Bamboo trees have grown in different parts of the country, especially areas surrounding lakes and rivers. The bamboo trees were planted in an effort to preserve the environment in buffer zones surrounding lakes and rivers in the country. The bamboo plantations play a vital role in the prevention of soil erosion. A group of people came together to plant bamboo trees, which was facilitated by the Chinese the bamboo plantations belong to the association and returns from sales go towards the association's fund. The bamboo has aided the production of furniture, broomsticks and toothbrushes among other things. Those residing close to bamboo plantations express the newfound appreciation they have developed for their presence. I don't mind the bamboo plantations around here. They can be used to make chairs and tables and barbecue sticks, and I have no problem with that. 
As the Minister of Environment was addressing the Parliament in a plenary session regarding the issue of land acquisitions and the preservation of buffer zones, the chairperson of the Land, Agriculture, Livestock and Environment Committee embarked on the Ministry's plans regarding bamboo plantations. In what way does the Ministry plan to harvest bamboo in the areas surrounding rivers Nyawogogo, Nyawarongo and Sebeya? The Minister of Environment explains the different ways bamboo harvests can be retained. The government signed a 40-year contract with East Africa Bamboo Forest Industry in December 2020 to harvest bamboo in buffer zones surrounding River Nyawugogo and Nyawarongo and planting a different type of bamboo that is more productive than the regular yellow, which will be planted on 2,129 hectares in the districts of Bujeserarwa, Magana and Goma, which is the first phase of bamboo that will be planted after the harvest. In developed countries, bamboo is an edible tree, although there are edible and inedible types. According to the Minister of Environment, the edible kind has begun getting cultivated in Rwanda. The bamboo we're planting now is edible, but it isn't grown enough for harvesting. We have good bamboo in Yandungu Park, and the Chinese will help teach Rwandans how to prepare bamboo meals. The Ministry of Environment has in addition pointed out that construction is in progress for a bamboo processing factory. Precious Chidezi, RTV News. The Ministry of Youth and Culture says that it is going to establish a new policy on culture in order to answer the current problems in the cultural industry and to support the development of those in this industry and the preservation of culture in general. Olive Nete continues. Some of the people who are in the art industry in various fields, including art and other cultural indicators, say that having a policy that guides them in their daily work will assist them in development and the country in general. It is a policy that will support the development of artists in their activities. It will also facilitate and assist artists to work with other institutions in registering their art, Today someone can imitate your work and you may not benefit from it. But that policy will facilitate artists to register for the safety of their activities because it will give trainings on how to go about it and it will also help us to know how it can bring benefits to the artist. We expect a lot from this new policy because now people have started to value art. We appreciate it because art contributes a lot and it is a big industry. Take an example of made in Rwanda products, for example clothes and many other things. Everyone who comes to Rwanda wants to go back home with the clothes, made in the country with its logo. Umubyei Clotilde, an expert in culture, notes that culture is the foundation of a nation and that the revised policy will assist in preserving the culture. Art is one of the indicators of culture. Even if the culture evolves, it doesn't only stop on the ancient culture. As every season comes, it comes with its principles. The culture is the foundation of a country. There wasn't a thing that was done back then in the culture of Rwanda that didn't play a positive role in the country. When you closely look at today's industry of art, it has lost some of the important things that make the Rwandan arts. The changes that will be made in the policy will serve in preserving the culture and arts in general. This will benefit the country as a whole. The spokesperson of the Ministry of Youth and Culture, Ruzindana Rugasaguhunga, noted that these reforms will support the policy that was already in place in order to promote the role of culture in the development of the country. He also highlighted some of the keynotes that will be included in the policy. The art industry is developing day by day. Today someone who is in the film industry benefits from it. 
an author benefits from his work. From the start of writing a book to its end, there are guidelines to follow to achieve the finished product. This also includes entertainment, from writing a piece to the full production of the music, all of what is explored in the policy. The policy assists in explaining the art industry and how it works and also how it can benefit the artist and the country in general. The policy also emphasizes on the language, how do we use the Kinyaranda language and how to preserve it. It is also included in the responsibilities of the Ministry of Youth and Culture. The revised cultural policy aims to value artists' works and protect their intellectual property. It is expected that this policy will be released in the fiscal year 2022-2023 national budget. Olive Nete, RTV News. Moving on, Rwandans and Friends of Rwanda on Friday marked 28 years since the liberation of Rwanda. The ceremony was attended by Malawi's Minister of Foreign Affairs, members of the diplomatic in that country and other dignitaries. Rwanda's High Commissioner to Malawi told those gathered of the fierce struggle the soldiers of what used to be the Rwanda Patriotic Army engaged in to stop the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi and liberate the country and how over the decades since Rwanda has been able to not only build but also develop significantly thanks to the good leadership now in place. He noted that the sacrifices made all those years ago are the very foundation which the country now stands, which is why every year Rwandans wherever they may be in the world, take the time to mark the day. That's all we had for you for today. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Motoni. Bye for now. Have a great weekend.